Hey guys, what's crack a lacking? Somebody give me a five for five and we'll get going here. Um, I need to know if the volume's okay too. Is it a little bit louder than yesterday? I want to make sure because I made some adjustments in my audio. Making sure everybody can hear me. Fast thinker, Jerry, butterfly. I Liam, my sister, butterfly. Good to see you, Jerry. Kathy's in here. Oh, yeah, baby. Oh, yeah. Aloha. Jennifer in the house. Hey, how's the volume on that, guys? Is it a little bit louder than yesterday? I know it was kind of low because I went back and, and watched it. Nothing. I, I didn't change any settings uh, to cause that, so I don't know what happened. But regardless, I, I made some other adjustments. Hey, Miss V. Hey, Judy. Everyday is what's up? Kristen Rippers in the hizzy. Okay, we're gonna get going. All right, so yeah, we've had this flare, and it's really the story I want to talk about today. And this really is probably not gonna be a very long um live stream. Um, but please like, share, and subscribe. And uh if you could please just uh share it out, would really love that. Um I'm waiting on uh, YouTube. Got to approve my uh, membership stuff, so it, that'll probably happen tonight. So probably tomorrow, I'll kind of roll that out. Okay. Um, so we'll just leave it at that. But everything's turned on. If you guys want to help, you can. If not, no biggie. I'm just uh, doing my thing. You know what I'm saying? I appreciate all the support you guys have always given me, and any anything you want to give me extra is is on. You know, I really do appreciate it. It's not expected though, so always remember that. Nothing's ever going to change on that end. I will never. Yeah, my content's not going to change no matter what's going on. So anyway. All right, guys. So what do we got? Hey, Spikes, they're good to see you. All right. Hey, guys, I am going to put my chat where I can't see it because I'll squirrel. Um, but yeah. So we have this flare right here. Now, I've been talking about this sunspot, guys, that has was incoming. Remember? And this, this sunspot, as soon as it crested over, it blew a flare. And it's a, it's a big one. Um, it's not an X flare. It is a, a high M class flare, like an M6. So it, it did give us uh, R2 radio blackouts. So let me uh, just grab the scroll here, and we'll just do it this way. That way you guys can uh, get a better look at this thing. And I do expect more out of this sunspot, okay? um this sunspot's not gonna i think it's gonna probably keep blowing flares the whole time it's over here facing earth so yeah so now there was didn't look to be too much of a cme with this if any at all um i wouldn't call this impulsive because the x-rays it kept producing x-rays so you got the initial blast right there and then watch how long it stays kind of bright then it kind of fades off and that, you know, and I support that by, you know, showing you this. This is over here at NOAA Space Weather Prediction Center. And it's an R2, but you can see how it kind of shot straight up. And it kind of fell off kind of at a at a slope here. Um, it's not a drastic slowdown like sometimes we see with like a really, really long duration one. But this was not just a straight up, straight down flare. So... Basically, it's kind of in the middle. And so what all that means is we would be experiencing radio blackouts a little bit longer. And when it does do that, typically we see a decent sized CME from that. But we are not seeing much of one at all. And this is SOHO, okay? That satellite's out in front of the Earth, always looking at the sun. Um, it's about a million miles closer to the sun, but it is from our perspective so let's take a look at what it's got for us here and see if we got anything to look at and you're not going to see anything you see a small little puff there but that was on the back side and that was going that way it's it's not hitting us at all so what i'm saying here guys this thing is not didn't produce a cme it's a flare this is a really good good way to show you guys that just because you have a flare even a strong one doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to blast plasma straight out everywhere also 
It doesn't happen all the time that way. Now, we do see it often, right? When you get a big flare, that's what we would expect to see as a CME. But it's not always the case. Now, they kind of figured all that out with the Carrington event. Again, that was an X-45 flare, and it did have CME with it, okay? But they were able, that's when they started really looking at those two things being different. Because you can have the X-ray production without the blast of plasma off the sun. The blast of plasma would be the, the CME. The X-ray production is the flare. So that's what we have today. I mean, honestly, guys, the this image here is, if you were just to look at the Soho image here, you would think absolutely nothing was going on. But there is something going on, right? Um, and that's why we look at everything. So if we go back to the 17th, that's that filament release. Now, I want to talk about that here in a second, too. But this is the one that caused the halo eruption. Um, hey, Monk. Hey, Daryl. Deep Quake, what's up? Trish in the house. Hey, I just seen your email, Trish. Um, I'll, I'll respond to that sometime tonight. I haven't checked my emails in a while, guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> I just kind of uh, browsed through them today and uh, just a few minutes ago, actually. And I need to respond to a few people. So just so you know, I didn't miss it. And it's there. I just want you to know I wasn't ignoring you. I just haven't looked. Um, anyway, so this is Soho again. And you see that halo eruption from that filament yesterday. Okay. So let me, um, what I'm going to do here, I'm going to go back over here to Iswa. And I want you guys to get a look at this flare one more time before we move on from that. Uh, because I do want to point out where this is located where the flare hit now i know most of my viewers are from the united states so that's why i'm kind of saying what i'm saying here it did impact us over here the day side of the planet was was facing well obviously it was facing the sun but over here in the states we were facing the sun when this flare happened so what did that do well that's that's why we took that hit okay so how do we know where it hit and all of that? Well, you come down here to the background x-ray and the deabsorption. And there's other ways to tell also. There's detectors everywhere, guys. So if they're if they're picking up extra x-ray here, you know, on the surface some from some of the collection, uh, data collection, then you know they can say, hey, yeah, we're getting a flare because massive increase in x-ray. But this is where it hit. This is at its strongest, and you can see how the even the red encompasses almost the whole United States. You know, but still, even at that, over half of this is out over the water. So that's why I point this out. 70% of the time that I'm going to come to you and show you a flare, it's going to be covering some water somewhere. Um, the planet is 70% water, right? And that goes to the whole discussion of why, you know, when the sun does blasts and things like that, and when it does have CMEs, how come it misses Earth a lot? Well, you got to think, we're like a little grain of sand out in space compared to the size of the sun. And everything just doesn't go in all directions like X-ray. Every time there's a flare, X-ray goes in all directions pretty much equally. So if, it, if we can see it, we're going to get a flare... We're going to get x-rays from it. Not always the case with the CME. Those are highly charged particles. That's plasma. Okay? It has mass. It's blowing out. Right? So, if you're really trying to say that, you know, there is something called Earth-facing quiet also. And there's still a whole lot to learn with that. Okay? There's a lot to learn with that. I will have to say. Um, but I do think it's a phenomenon that we see. And what that means is when the sunspots and stuff get closer to right in front of us into the Earth strike zone, what that means is that um, they kind of quiet down. Like, we're going to watch this one, okay? So what we're going to do, we're going to do a little study on this sunspot here. As this thing rotates through, we're going to see if this thing, like, does flare, 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 and gets about right here and see if it slows down. And then when it gets here, we'll see if it starts flaring again. Right? So that's what I'll say to that. We'll, we'll, 
we'll we'll do our own little study here just on one sunspot, right? But still, there you know a lot of times we do see when these sunspots get here in the Earth strike zone, it will slow down, and I don't know what causes it. I have no idea, but we're going to see if this one holds true to that. Um, even if it flares or has a CME in, in its current position, it's probably going to affect us anyway. But we're going to see when it gets directly in front of us, because that's kind of what I'm talking about. So you got this, again, you got the big flare here, and that's the X-ray production. So, and again, there was no, you know, there was no uh, CME with that. It didn't look to be anyway. And we can kind of prove that out with this image, okay? Same satellite, just a 211 angstrom. Um, but we get to see it ripple through the corona more if there was a CME. So if we, we're right at the time of the flare. Watch right here. You can barely even see it see it flare. Watch watch this. There's the flare. That's it. So there was no seeing me with that. Nothing that's going to affect us, at least. Okay? So it just, what we've got from that flare is what we're going to get. And it's here. It's already hit. It gets here in about eight minutes. Now I want to point out, if you look back here, remember I said we had a CME that went off the top right part of the sun here? Watch. Well, let me back it up. You're going to see it on the back side. You're going to be able to see the corona of the sun here kind of split open. See that? That's that CME, that little small CME. So it's going off the back side. Now, listen. This coronal hole right here has grown bigger. It looks like it could be continually to grow. And when it gets here, we're going to have more and more. All right? More and more chances of this. It's going to start flowing out particles, and that's what we're going to see. So, yeah. Hey, Jammer. Now, um, I'll tell you what here. And again, guys, this is not going to be a very long one. There's just not a whole lot to share. And I actually I have to be somewhere here very shortly, but um, I wanted to get this in for you guys. Now this is the 304 angstrom, and you can barely even see the flare on this one. Okay, so again, if it was CME, we would see dark shadow type of stuff kind of blow off. We would probably see a very bright orange color, some sort of shape blow off the sun over here. We did not see that. Okay. But I do look for this thing to start doing its thing. But I, I think the bigger story right now will be that incoming CME, okay, and this coronal hole. That coronal hole, I think, has a really good shot at giving us a, a geomagnetic storm, at least a low-level one. And if it comes in right after that CME hit, um, that could mean a little bit more intense conditions could happen. Hey, Full Hope, good to see you. Man B. What's up? Hey, Miss Dragon. Digna Ortiz. All right, baby. That's right. Spikester. Yeah, EMP Shield. That's a good product. Uh, Martha, Martha and, uh, well, Adam and Dex are Marfugal. They're affiliated with those guys. They, that's, it's a good product, guys. You guys should look into that. Very good product. All right. Um, if you guys are wondering what that is, it's basically it's, it's to protect your electronics from EMPs or a blast from the sun like a CME. I'm not going to go too much into that. I just wanted to mention it because it was brought up in the chat there. So, and it is pertinent to what we're talking about. <clears throat> what it is, guys, is it's just something you can hook up. It's a small little piece of equipment. You can protect all your electronics with it in your car, everywhere, in your house, from all of that stuff that can happen from these blasts okay so facebook.com dr tony phillips go give him some love guys go over here and show him show him some love give him some traffic he's pretty much talking about the same thing here um on march 20th is when he's when he's saying that this uh cme could impact us and i tend to agree with that now i'm going to show you something here that um I think Noah's got this one a little bit wrong, guys. Just being honest. They got this thing coming in on like the late in the day on the 21st, like midday. Okay. 
um, right here. So they got it coming in basically a day later than what I would have thought. Now, I don't have all the raw data in front of me. I don't know what gets inputted into this model. But Noah's saying this. Now, we can go look at uh, NASA's version of the same model. And it looks like it's going to be hitting on the 21st also. So, you know, maybe it will. Um, I, you know, I don't know. And that's why I now cast. Now, I'll be able to tell you when things start getting a little closer. Okay. So, NASA's actually, these two models are kind of agreeing. So, maybe that is what's going to happen. But judging by what I've seen with the blast itself and the data that I've seen with it, I tend to think that it might get here a little bit sooner than that. And if it does, that just means it's going to get be a little bit more intense. It's really that simple, okay? Um, typically, anyway. Now, obviously, we got to take in consideration the BZ and everything else that we talk about, right? So over here at Discover Data, this is the space weather data. We are in a negative six, and we have been almost for for multiple hours now. That is why we are seeing this. We're having an increase in geomagnetic activity. The KP index is going up. That's just a unit of measurement, okay? That's what they use. So they measure this, you know, happy. Here we go, right? <laughs> but what I do when I see this, and this isn't expected, I'm going to let you guys in on what I do. I'm going to show you guys my process here a little bit and how I think, right? Which, you know, some may, some people may think I'm stupid. I don't know. But this is just how I how I, uh, how I I go about things. If I see something like a, an increase pretty drastically, because remember yesterday I talked about us being on the basement floor and we had to be paying attention to cosmic rays. Well, that's no longer the case. Once you get this, it pretty much erases that, okay? And it did ramp up fairly quickly. So when I seen that, I come over to the Discover. The next the next slide I go to is this one. I want to see the data. I want to see if we got increased density, increased speed, if the phi angle flipped, which it did. That is the polarity of the solar wind itself. Remember, it gets here magnetically, so the polarity matters. So when it flips from negative to positive or positive to negative, it can jerk on our magnetic field, and that itself can actually put us into geomagnetic storm, usually for a brief period of time, but it can do that. Now, it's not often that I could come here and show you this BZ. Now, what's the BZ? I will explain just a little bit tonight on what that is. That is the magnetic polarity position of our magnetic field, okay? And when we're at negative six or more, that means we couple. And so when we couple, it just drags stuff in on the poles. And when it comes in on the poles, we see aurora at the poles. That's why we see most of our aurora on the poles, because that's how it comes in. You got to think of Earth having a bar, like being a bar magnet. So if it's negative, it's going to come in on the positive side. If it's positive, it's going to come in on the negative side, right? So when we couple, we complete that circuit magnetically. And that's what happens, right? So and then it lets stuff just flow in. So now we had an increase in density here. Then it kind of fell off. Now this right here, this little jump, that particular reading right there, 18.86. I'm not sure it's correct. Um, I do think, because if we go over here and we look at, well, if you come over here and we look at this, we have a data dropout every day, right? We're having a data dropout right now because of the position of the satellites at that time, right? It can't collect the reading for the x-ray. It's not in the right position. So if you take this and you go roughly 24 hours, it's right here. So if we're at that position where it's a data dropout, sometimes we will see incorrect reading over here. Okay, so I pay attention to that also. But the speed's ramping up, density's going down. 
which is kind of typical. If you're moving faster, that typically means that there's less particles to push. And if there are more particles, it'll flush them out. So when you get an increase in both, that's when we take pretty good hits. But remember, the BZ, in my opinion, and a lot of other people's opinion, is probably the, the key factor on how, how strong something hits us. You know, yeah, we can look at these big blasts from the sun, but if our BZ is not coupled in like it, like it could be, if it was in the positive, we'll deflect it. That's just what happens. So um, let me take you guys over here to uh, the magnetosphere tool models because you're going to see the stuff come in. This is why I'm showing it to you. Remember yesterday we had no magnetic pressure. It was almost completely just solid blue. But you can see how we've got some stuff hitting right now. Um, so when I see that, like I said before, I start, what I usually do is I'll go over to seeds after I say, hey, we're getting hit with something. I can't really figure it out. I'll go back and I'll start at three days prior. Okay, so I'll go back to the 15th and start looking and see what we had going on. What we got going on here? This, this right here is a blast that we had that caused that radiation storm the other day. Big, huge blast that didn't come at us, right? But there was another blast that went south. And even that one. So we could have taken a little glancing blow from something that was kind of more or less going south of Earth. So that could be what's going on here. I don't know. I guess in the grand scheme of things, it probably doesn't matter. But I always wonder when we get these hits for no reason. Now, it could be a stealth CME too, one that we just didn't see. So we see that a lot, especially during solar maximum. When there's so many eruptions, it becomes hard to tell what's going on. So yeah, so with that being said, we just got to pay attention and see what goes on from here. And uh, yeah, but um, I do think this corona hole, we're probably getting ready to connect to that if we haven't already. And what that is, again, it's a hole in the atmosphere and that's the surface of the sun. The surface of the sun is colder than the atmosphere. I say that almost every live stream, but it is, that is what it is. A lot of people don't know that. So when the corona peels back, the atmosphere exposes the surface and all that plasma can just flow out. Any kind of magnetic connection it grabs, it's going to grab our connection and it's just going to start flowing stuff out. Okay? So if we connect to it and we stay connected to it for a couple days, um, yeah, we could see geomagnetic storming from this. That's kind of what I'm saying. Okay? Now, let's go down here and check out the 94 angstrom because this will show you exactly how bright this flare was. <laughs> it was a decent flare, guys. See how bright that was? It also gives you a better idea how long it lasted. Because it did. It was not a short duration, but it wasn't extremely long either. So it is pretty bright there on the 94 Angstrom. Remember, this is SDO. It's that satellite in geosynchronistic orbit. Again, it's basically from our per perspective, it's always looking at the sun. Okay? So here's that sunspot. Now, why I'm saying that we might have more eruptions from this, I'm already seeing the positive and negative cores in here intermingling. When you start seeing that happen, you're going to see more eruptions. Um, and I do think that this looks like it's growing. This one up here on the north looks almost bigger as far as size. But if you look at it, it's really only got like one uh, base of core here, a negative and a positive core. You don't see a whole lot of uh, little smaller uh, cores in there, which would be another sunspot. And we call them sunspot groupings. We can call them coronal prominences. That's just, it's just a very active area of the sun. Okay, now we got sunspots over here too. Now these are still in play. Remember that. And sometimes even more so, if it, if it blows a CME on this side, what happens? Then we got to start paying attention to uh, radiation storms. All right. So again, this is the, the same thing, just a, a black and white view. So, um, Tell you what we'll do here. 
Okay, now, that's the sun and solar minimum. I've been showing that a lot. So the difference of the sun, guys, if you want to know, solar minimum to max is right here. Okay, you can see it very clearly. This is 2020. This is today. So just I always like to show that to give people an idea of what's going on. Okay. Well, let's go back over here real quick and uh, go here. Well, all right. We push play here. Now, um, yeah, guys, so if you've got any questions, fire them in there. I don't have a whole lot more for you tonight. Um, there's just not, I mean, we had the, this flare happen. We got the incoming CME. I'll definitely be back if anything else happens. But um, also, uh, I'll be back tomorrow anyway for an update. So, I'm thinking about changing it up a little bit. I might start doing short updates in the morning and, you know, do maybe do a live stream at night. I'm not sure. Thinking about changing that up just a little bit. I got to make everything fit in my life, you know. Um, you know, I'm a family. I'm a dad first and a husband first before I'm anything else. So, got to make sure everything's okay on that end, too. But, you guys got any questions? It's been raining all day. Hey, Betty. Hey, Star. Jason, what's up? Well, look, yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, Jason, yeah. Hey, Rebecca. It's okay. You get you get at least three excused tardies. <laughs> hey, Ellie. Yeah, that was my that was my dog. That's my uh, that's my grand dog. Her name is Puka. Hey, Vicky. My internet mom. What's up? Gunslinger's in the house. <laughs> Let my freak flag. <laughs> That's right, Brian. Good, good to see you, man. Guys, you should check out his channel. You really should. It's good, good stuff. Good stuff. Feel free to drop your link. Well, you might not be able to because you're not a mod. Um, but we can. We just fixed that for you. There you go. You got a wrench, brother. You're going to drop your link at any time. Feel free to, okay? Hey, guys. Hey, good to see you. Aloha. Oh, and what you said in the comment section yesterday, we'll work that out, okay? I promise. Don't worry about all that, okay? Promise you we'll work that out. I'm still trying to figure it out myself, so just so you know. Miss B. Trishy, trishy. Okay, yeah, I'll I'll respond to you though. Just and I'll I'll keep it like very generic. Hey, Miss. Oh, the South. That's right. He was asking in the comment section about the South Atlantic anomaly. Um, I will talk about that tomorrow because it does tend to be a longer conversation. Um, and I will go over it. I to I told him I was going to do it today in the comment section. And I completely brained it. I mean, I forgot about it. So I, I definitely will. Let's see here. Hey, Terry, what's up? Good to see you. Yeah, Isaac, I'm sorry, man. <laughs> I promise you I'll, I'll go over that tomorrow. Yeah, I know. But if you want to drop, if you don't want the wrench or whatever, I can, you know, I'll just pull it back. No big deal. But if you want to drop your link to your channel, you can do that, man. Always. Only only the moderators and myself can put links in there. That's, and you probably know that. So. Yeah, I'm sorry, Isaac. I completely forgot. I really did. I am so sorry. Hey, Daryl. Deep Quake's in the house. Yes. That's, thank you, Deep Quake. Mr. Paul. Yeah, we guys, don't forget Iceland is just erupting like crazy right now. And Terry's in here, so. Go check out his channel too. He does he does the earthquake reports and seismic activity. He does a really good job, um, you know. And Ron does too. And all, every, I mean, like I said, guys, I, I listen to everybody. So that's just what I do. And I know some people don't like that, but you know, um, I'm going to listen to everybody, even if I don't like them as a person. You know what I mean? 
Just because I don't like somebody as a person, don't make them stupid. So that's what I'll say. I won't promote somebody that's just nasty, but I, I definitely will not ignore. I think that's a mistake. <laughs> some of the best things that's ever been discovered in this world were from some of the most evil people. So that's just what I'll say. All right, guys, I am going to pop off. So uh, uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Isaac, I promise you tomorrow. Yeah, thank you, Jeremy. Really do appreciate it. Hey, Deep Quick, thank you, brother. Thanks for that super sticker. Really do appreciate that. Cherish, I'll respond to that. And if you just respond back, say, hey, you got it or whatever. So I know it ain't something like crazy. And it could be spam or something. But yeah. Hey, Leisure, good good to see you. Hey, Tanya, thanks again, Deep Quick, for that super sticker. Hey, you guys are going to like these emojis I'm about ready to give you guys. They're pretty cool. So anyway, I got a, I got a chipmunk holding a computer. See you, Vicky. Rats in the house. Hold a sec. What's happening? Back at Jennifer. Love y'all. Thanks to my mod, my mod crew. Um, and thanks to all the subscribers, guys. Please share this out. And uh, you know, I want to. I'm trying to grow the channel. It's, it's growing slowly, but uh. So that's what's going on. And as you can see, I got real life happening. All right, guys. God bless. Yahusha saves. And uh, you can drink this Kool-Aid.